Denaya Eskar, um, who serves as a Democratic uh, majority leader. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Give me first your reaction to what we're hearing um, on the ground there in Colorado in this incredibly um, horrific shooting at this gay nightclub. You know, I think folks are devastated, and you really hit the nail on the head that as much as we are shocked um, by what happened, we're not surprised, um, given the rhetoric that's been happening across the United States in the last few years that's been escalating. You put out a statement um, that I want to read for some folks. Um, for that sense of safety to be shattered by this unspeakable act of violence impacts the entire LGBTQ community. On Trans Day of Remembrance, we have already been grieving the hate crimes that too often claim the lives of LGBTQ people simply because of who we are. We must take urgent and meaningful action to reduce gun violence and prevent crimes that target and kill LGBTQ community. Talk to me about what that meaningful action looks like to you. You know, I think we need to be thoughtful and we need to really make sure that we are looking out for all communities when it comes to the rhetoric, when we hear folks constantly right now, especially in this last election, really trying to bring down our trans youth when they are speaking hateful things, um, especially those who are elected to represent us, putting those kinds of messages out there. Folks need to understand that other people are listening to that rhetoric and they are taking action upon themselves. We need to do better and we need to be better, especially as elected officials that are chosen to represent our communities. We know that this is being investigated as a hate crime. Um, obviously, the target being the LGBTQ community within this gay nightclub. This is also, though, a mass shooting. And Colorado knows mass shootings, sadly. Um, the New York Times writing this, Colorado has been the scene of several of the United States' most notorious mass shootings, including those at Columbine in 1999 and a movie theater in Aurora in 2012. Also going on to say there have been several mass shootings in Colorado Springs over the years. Last year, a gunman killed six people at a birthday party on Mother's Day before taking his own life. In 2015, a man with an assault-style rifle killed three people and wounded nine in a rampage at a Planned Parenthood office. Why does this keep happening in the state of Colorado? You know, that's a question that I think a lot of us, especially those of us elected to serve at the state legislature, have been grappling with since I've been serving for the past eight years. We've continued to try to pass meaningful legislation for gun safety. I think the fact that we invested $450 million alone from federal dollars that came to our state and mental health um, programs we're really trying to get a grip on this and we're trying to figure out what the issue is and we're just doing our best to really pass meaningful legislation um, especially when it comes to the mental health lack of mental health care that we have not only in the state but across the nation but also to really make sure that we are looking at ideas and ways in which we can be sure that we have gun safety measures here in our state and how we can improve upon those, I think is going to be a big conversation coming up in the next legislature. How difficult it is it to institute gun safety measures in a state that is open carry? You know, I think we've been successful here in Colorado. We've passed um, background checks. We've passed um, the red flag bill here in Colorado as well. Um, it's never been easy, but it's something that I think folks are really um, committed to working on. And I am term limited, so I won't be a part of those conversations starting in January. But I know that we do have a group of legislators that are really trying to put their heads around not just gun safety, but also mental health and how to improve our ability to really move forward in meaningful mental health care for all Coloradans. What is the governor's role also as a member of the LGBTQ community? You know, I think his role is one that he's been a part of. He's been a part of the conversations when it comes to the legislation that we send to his desk. He's signed that legislation uh, that I've mentioned into law, but I think he also will be a part of the continuing conversations that we have as well. You know, he's the first um, openly gay elected governor, and I think he takes that role very seriously as well, just like the rest of us in the LGBTQ caucus here in Colorado really take on. We have new members coming in in January. That caucus is going to grow because our representation has been growing as well, and we have to just continue to push back against those who put out the hateful rhetoric. For those that are scared in the LGBTQ community right now in Colorado, what do you say to them? I feel you. I, I'm, I'm afraid as well, but just know that there are people 
There are mo members of our community and actual real allies that are working every single day to continue to make this place a safer world for all of us and our families. Um, hold on to each other, hold on to each other tightly, mm -hmm. and know that we will continue to find places that are safe, and someday the entire world will be a safe place for all of us. But until then, hold on to our community and lift each other up and do everything we can to support each other.